Hey y'all, it's Chris with Rockin' 8 Farm and today's topic is drought. Now anybody who follows a variety of YouTube channels, you're probably hearing a lot about drought right now. You might be a little tired of hearing about drought right now, but we're gonna talk about Central Texas drought today. Now when we talk about drought, I believe in one of my other videos, I said something along the lines of, I don't remember it ever being this bad. Well, I've only been in Texas for about eight years, but I've actually done a little research and my part of Texas is currently in the worst drought in 128 years. We're more than eight inches below the average rainfall for this time of year. Um, every month was behind. Usually April, May, we have really wet springs and that gives us lots of water load in the soil that pushes us into summer. And now it's August and typically every year it's really starting to dry out pretty bad by this time. And we're starting to feed hay. But y'all, I have been feeding my pigs hay since May. Y'all, this is what we're looking at right now in my part of Texas. Everything is crunch, crunch. Everything is dry, dry. This is what my pigs are trying to live on right now, y'all. I have two things on my property that are a little bit of a saving grace, and that is that I water my trees. So around where the trees grow, and this is in the pig area, grass grows around the tree wells. So they come in here and they snack on this and they graze on this. And luckily, I have a lot of trees in here. You guys just want some grass, huh? Yeah. Oh, Ruby. Oh, Ruby. You just want some grass? You just want some grass, Ruby? So like I said, we, we have resorted to feeding hay. Here's the remnants of some of their hay that's left over. Because they are almost always going to go through and get all the good tasty bits first. So we're in a position right now where um, I tested the hay to make sure that they would eat it. I know they'll eat alfalfa, but alfalfa is very expensive. So I wanted to find out if they would eat the coastal, and then more specifically, if they would eat the coastal that's grown locally. Um, you can get really, really good coastal hay that's shipped in from California, but it's getting almost impossible to find the large round bales, and it is also very, very expensive. The local stuff is much cheaper. And when I say much cheaper, ugh, I kind of hate to even think about the actual prices, but I can get it as inexpensively as $115 for a four foot round bale. I've also seen it as much as 160. So let's just say 140 is kind of average price for a four foot round bale here in my part of Texas right now. So we're in a position where we're having to decide, is it worth the fuel to drive out further? Can I save enough money if I drive far enough that the gas doesn't just make it a wash? And so far, the answer has been no. I have found round bales for as cheap as $60 in Oklahoma, but Oklahoma and back in my Ford F-250 is about $250 in fuel. So I'd be spending $250 in fuel to save roughly $150 on three round bales. Math just doesn't work out there. The other thing that becomes a problem with the drought is the fecal load on the ground. See, typically a good rainstorm is going to wash all of this down, wet it up so that some of the little critters can come in and start taking advantage of it and push these nutrients down into this grass. And I know this is a little gross, but this is just pig farmers being pig farmers. You can see everything is just dry and hard. It's kind of like uh, the dirt clods that you get when it's really dry. So none of the poop is breaking down. So I'm actually at a place and I shouldn't have to on this half acre paddock. I'm actually at a place where I need to come in here with a rake and rake up big piles of poop and load them in the tractor and take them to compost because it's just getting ridiculous. I mean, it's not like it's nasty. It doesn't smell. It's all dry, super dry, no moisture in it, poo, but there's just too much of it here. Now on my property, y'all, uh, watering grass is not an option. Um, there is a well on the property, but the well is collapsed. I'm actually going to have to drill a new well. And before I can drill a new well, um, the old well has to be filled in with concrete from the bottom all the way up to the top. That's the rules and regulations for, for well drilling in my particular county here in Texas. So that's not gonna happen anytime soon. 
Someday I plan on building my wife a new house on the property. When I do, we will most likely roll the cost of a new septic system and a new well into the construction loan. But until then, thankfully we're connected to city water. So my house has water, my animals have water, but y'all, I cannot afford to water this grass. Uh, I think I've mentioned this in other videos, but my summertime water bills are $600 plus. So um, that's, you know, the water we use in the house and then the water for all the animals and, you know, the water that has to be like dumped on the ground so that the chickens can put their feet in it so they don't overheat. Um, keeping them in a fresh water supply, filling wallows, etc. My summertime water bills are well over $600. So if I was gonna add trying to keep this grass green to that, I know I would be in excess of $1,000 a month every month for water. And I just can't do it because those big round bales of hay, they last my pigs a couple of months. Now the good part is we're not gonna be here forever. The dust bowl that has become my property. And it's really sad when I uh, compare this to the pictures of my property in the past where it was just green and lush and beautiful and the pigs couldn't even keep up with the grass and I had to get in here with the lawnmower. But it is August. Um, in September, it'll start to cool down. In October, generally, the rains come back. We'll see what happens this year, because who knows. But there's kind of an end in sight, but right now it's miserable, y'all. We are over 100 degrees every single day. Um, I think we were at 99 one day last week and believe it or not, we were like jumping around, throwing our hands in the air because it was under a hundred degrees. So we're over a hundred every single day. Um, humidity for this area for this time of year is relatively low. It's just very, very dry and we're just not getting rain. So while the crew all comes over here to greet me in protest, wanting to know where their grass is at, We'll sign off and we'll get ready to get together as a family and perform our rain dance. We're hoping things change for us real soon. Until then, what choice do we have, y'all? We just have to tough it out. I drive through um, small towns on weekends on occasion. My wife and I will go to a poultry show or we'll just go for a little drive to go see if we can find something here or there. And every small town I go through on every weekend has a line of trailers that goes on for miles outside of every sale barn. It's just bad here in Central Texas, y'all. We're actually at a place right now where people cannot afford to keep their livestock and they're selling them off. We're just trying to kind of like Forrest Gump being the last shrimp boat after the big storm. We're just trying to hold on to our livestock, keep them happy, keep them healthy, and get through this drought and hopefully come out on the other end of it, ready to get right back into bacon seed making. So please y'all keep us in your thoughts, keep us in your prayers. Um, really hope we get some rain soon. But until I see y'all again, this has been Chris with Rockin' 8 Farm. Be happy, live healthy.